Okay, so a fourth soap in this particular CMOS series, we are using the CMOS that I got the regular beige color. Before I move on to the purple CMOS tests, and this one, I decided to try to uh, blend more because everybody said, more water, more, more. So with this one, I thought it'd be a good idea to uh, show you guys. Let's, wa let's see what happens if we put more water in because so many comments were like, more, 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 you didn't use enough water. Here's the thing. Everything that I read about CMOS was very arbitrary, right? Like in one place, it would be just a little bit of water and then some commenters were saying to cover it and other commenters were saying be very precise two ounces of uh sea moss to six ounces of water and all this this stuff i've already done all of this that that's all things that were done trying to figure out why the heck my sea moss wasn't actually working why i never got a gel like everyone is suggesting i should have done and so i decided with this last one to go ahead and take the remaining sea moss that i had the three ounces that were left and put more water in and blend the crap out of it with my immersion stick and still show you what I ended up with. And hint, I still ended up with a whole lot of mess. I've always really disliked how arbitrary everything is. There's no real rhyme or reason to it. And so that's what I'm wanting to figure out within all of these deep dives that we're doing and really going into all the different processes and whatever. I wanna figure out what the actual right way is and what happens if we push those boundaries and push those limits, which is what we've been doing throughout the entirety of the channel. And so this is really no different. And so in the hopes that we can get an established, this is what you should do for CMOS, you know, thing, I'm going to take it and I'm going to dilute it even more with even more water and then use that water for my lye solution to see if we can break down the remaining chunky bits because there are still a lot of chunky bits left. But let's get to the video and the pouring and the making and all the things and we can talk more about this whole CMOS journey and really probably why it irritates me. So the fourth uh, soap with this particular CMOS, I'm going to take what I have left of the CMOS, I'm going to add more water to it and I am going to blend it up more and then add it into my lye solution using the three ounces of this, whatever this ends up being, as a portion of my water. And so in this particular instance, it's 12.54 ounces of my water, which means I am taking that minus three ounces, you get it. So while we do this and we see if whether or not any of this has any impact on you know me getting all of the little bits of the CMOS out of this and actually creating a gel, I do wanna talk about the CMOS generally and what it is comprised of, because I know it might th seem like I'm just being real salty with all of this because I'm having a bad time. And you know what, if you want to think that, that's totally fine. But while I've been doing this, I've been actually thinking about the chemical composition of CMOS and whether or not it's even something that we should be putting into our soaps. Now, I've been having issues with it. You see the weird uh, slimy bits that exist within the soap that is independent of the CMOS particles. You see the kind of unhealthy looking areas as I'm cutting it where it looks like it might be a lye heavy soap, et cetera and so forth. And I've been thinking, huh, is this the right thing to use in this particular application? Should, is this better served for essentially a cosmetic? And so this is kind of why I've been thinking this. And so kind of follow me down this path, if you will. If we're looking at the chemical composition of CMOS, we have uh, essentially 55% of polysaccharides, which are topically are really great. I mean, studies have shown recently that polysaccharides are really good for wound healing, for anti-aging, for skin repair, for moisturizing, all of the jazz. So it could theoretically be good, but again, soap is a rinse off product, no matter how much you want to say it's not, it's not on your skin long enough to really do much of a difference. And so really what we're wanting to get from an additive that you're going to put in soap is going to be how it's going to lather, how it's going to perform. So the moisturizing is good. That means it's not stripping your skin of necessary oils. So that's a plus for sure with polysaccharides. But for the rest of it, it's like, well, I think that's probably better suited for a cosmetic, for an actual leave on like a serum or a lotion, you get it. So in addition to that 55% polysaccharides, we are dealing with 15% mineral matter. And so that is going to be magnesium, calcium, phosphorus, iodine, sulfur, right? 
Now, for the magnesium and the calcium, I do have issues with that because that's what's found in hard water. And for me, I don't think it's a good idea to be incorporating the stuff, the minerals that we fight against in hard water applications into our soap. Because what does hard water do? Those minerals bind with our soap molecules once they hit water and whatnot, and it really dampens that lather. And then afterwards, you get soap scum on your sinks, on your showers, all of the jazz. It's not a good time. And so what I think I'm getting inside of these bars is actually soap scum. See why we don't put Epsom salt into soap because it's magnesium and you essentially are creating blobby soap scum that is not going to benefit the lather. And again, if that's what we're looking for with an additive for soap, so that it's not good, a good time for me. The rest of them for iodine and sulfur and phosphorus, we've talked about phosphorus in the members only. Iodine is a, an interesting one because people do have iodine sensitivities, uh, including me, you know, and so I'm a little bit nervous about these lather tests, but it'll all probably be fine, you know, but, and the sulfur is going to make things smell bad, you know, and so while I haven't noticed much of a smell with this existing CMOS, uh, there definitely is a smell in the next one. And I know that just by opening the package, I haven't even done anything with it, but it stinks real bigly. So that's an interesting time. 15% of this is the mineral matter. So just keep that in mind while we go to the pork. Okay, so in addition to the 55% polysaccharides, the 15% mineral matter, we are also dealing with 20% proteins. And so that's going to be your amino acids. Amino acids can have a benefit topically in leave on products. Amino acids can also have a nice benefit inside a soap because it does help with slip. It also helps with moisturizing all of the jazz. And I, in my experience, it does not really diminish the lather at all. So that's a benefit. 20% of this you know, actual composition of the CMOS can be useful, you know, and then the remaining 10% is going to be your lipids. So that's going to be, see, yeah, you see there's still, still clumpy bits in there. So the remaining 10% is going to be your lipids. That's your fatty acids. Those are the things that are actually going to contribute to the performance of the bar because those fatty acids are being turned into soap. Now we talked about the benefits of the fatty acids chains and the omegas that are found within this within CMOS when we did, I think the first video. And so that's great. So 10% of that with the lipids cool, that actually has a, a usable benefit as far as saponification and whatnot is concerned and bar performance. 20% uh, of it with the amino acids, the proteins could be a good thing, could be a bad thing, depending on, you know, what amino acids and what protein strains somebody's allergic to. And when paired with the 15% mineral matter that does include a known allergen of iodine and essentially 55% of polysaccharides, which is kind of a nothing burger. I, I don't know. I, I don't know that it's the best thing to be putting into our soaps, especially considering we have the, the problem with the magnesium and the calcium. So the minerals that are going to be causing soap scum within our soaps. I could be, you know, proven wrong though with all of this. I've yet to do the lather tests and the lather might be amazing. The hand feel might be amazing. But as you can see with all of these pores, as we've been cutting these bars, none of these bars look healthy. This is, not, I have sold some ugly bars of soap, but I've never sold anything that would look like this, you know? And all of the blending and all of the stuff in the world has not actually yielded a result that I would be, you know, proud to sell with probably the exception of yesterday's soap. And that was me putting just whole dried sea moss into the lye solution and whatever leached out during that process leached out. So I don't know. Uh, again, this is just kind of a working theory. We still need to test the lather and I need to think on it a little bit more. But for now, let's go on to the cut of this guy. Okay, and on to the cut. And as you can see from the top of this, nah, it doesn't look great. It definitely got a whole lot of soda ash on there, which is fine, but it does suggest that perhaps this was not poured at an actual emulsion and emulsion was not reached. And because I see pop and gel, you can usually get away with not hitting a full emulsion anyway. But as you can see, we have some crumbly bars going on here. It's almost like that extra amount of liquid that I'd been putting in the first three batches of soap 
provided a benefit because none of the soaps looked like this, looked super dry coming out of the, um, off of the, oh, out of the mold. And it really does remind me of like a salt bar, which does make sense. And salt bars are actually really great for the skin. They'd have a lot of benefits. And so, you know, maybe I'm wrong. And I, this is why we're doing all this, right? We are testing things and really looking at all of the components of any sort of additive and whether or not it's kind of worth it to put into soaps. As for, for me, I don't know. Uh, there are there are benefits, I think, for CMOS. I do not, I don't think that benefit is within soap. It's, it, this is a two-part, this is a two-pronged reason. And again, the biggest reason is because of the chemical composition of the, the CMOS itself, but also just because of the amount of time and effort that I have to put into preparing this to make sure that it's ready to go. And I understand that people are having, you know, easier experiences with this. This is what people are reporting in my comments and everything, but this is not what I am experiencing. And I cannot be the only person in the world that is not, that is not having a good time with CMOS that is finding this also to be a whole lot trickier than one would so then one would think because of you know the suggestions on the packages but that is an interesting thing in and of itself because people consume this they they ingest CMOS and so you would think that it actually should be pretty easy to turn into some sort of gel or something that you could manage to get down your throat I don't know I don't know anyway working theories this is what this is we still have some lather tests to do before we make any real determinations on all of this I could very well be proven wrong but these are just my opinions. What do you think? Based on that chemical composition, what are you thinking the benefits of a CMOS would be in a soap that we can't get from something else that is wildly easier to use? You know what I mean? Let me know. Seriously, I'm interested. Yeah, so as you can see, no amount of blending was going to actually break down all of those chunks. And uh, they did still show up in the soap and also the like soap scummy bits uh, showed up in the soap as well. So out of the four that we've made up to this point, still a lot of clumpy, not good texture bars. And I don't like that at all. So I am going to switch to a new CMOS, which we will be starting tomorrow and see if maybe I just had a bad batch of CMOS, which would be weird. You know what I mean? But we're gonna do that and uh, see if the experience is any better. So fingers crossed for that. But coming up later today, we're going to be doing the tests for the lather. Now this is going to be an important thing because I have a lot of opinions on CMOS and I believe that we should be talking about CMOS and instructing people on CMOS in a responsible way to stave off what I think is going to happen within these lather tests. That said, I don't actually know what's going to happen with the lather test because I haven't filmed that yet. So I will be doing that and you should see that this afternoon. Sudzers, thank you for being here. You guys are awesome. You guys are epic. I hope you're enjoying your week. It is spring break around here. So I've got dogs here, dogs there, kid there, all of the, there's a lot going on at the moment, but I'm going to zoom zoom because we are going to go have a sleepover at the soap shop because they decided that that would be a fun thing to do for spring break. And we haven't done one of those in a couple years. So that'll be a good time. Uh, for the rest of you that exist, hi, hello, you're here. Thanks for coming. Uh, everybody click like, subscribe, comment, all the things to feed the algorithm. I made all those check checks. If you're interested in these soaps, uh, soapandclay.com is not where you find them because I'm not selling these right now. I'm not sure because I want to check the lather. You get it. Anyway, um, I'm going to go, but I will see you guys all again later on today for the soap test round of Soapy Fun. Bye.